the final release for Kubernetes for 2023 is out and it's Kubernetes 1.29, the Mandela release. So Mandela means the universe and it perfectly represents the community, the global diverse community and everyone contributing in a different way to make this release happen with 49 enhancements, 11 moving to stable, 19 to beta and 19 to alpha. This shows with how much velocity the project is moving forward, not only with the stability enhancements, but also the new features that are getting in to even improve the usability of Kubernetes at large scale in production. Like it's already used at massive scales with 7,000 plus nodes uh, at different places, but still making it more stable in the production. That's what some of the goals of this particular release aligns with. Hello everyone, my name is Sam Bhattag and in this video, we'll be discussing all about Kubernetes 1.29. I'll be discussing some of the features that I feel are cool for this particular release and you also let me know in the comment section which Kubernetes 1.29 feature you like the most. It can be alpha, beta or stable. So let's talk about deprecations and removal in Kubernetes 1.29. So the feature gates are disable cloud providers and disable kubelet cloud credential providers are both being set to true by default. So basically users who are using the entry cloud provider will be forced to use now the external cloud provider. With this, they also have to provide the cloud provider external on kubelet of every node. Another one is the removal of V1 beta 2 of the flow schema and priority level configuration. So they will no longer be available in 1.29. So it has to be migrated to V1 flow control API server or V1 beta 3. And if it's V1, then it should be this particular thing is renamed to spec.limited.nominal concurrency shares. And if it's V1 beta 3, then also it's nominal concurrency shares. So since this, this is available since 1.26, and this also will be deprecated and this will be removed in 1.32. So in 1.32, you have to use flow control API server.gates.io slash v1 of the flow schema. So that was about deprecations. Now let's move on to some of the features. The most interesting one is the CSI node expansion secrets. So it, this particular feature is moved to stable in 1.29. So CSI drivers sometimes require secrets for expansion. This particular node expansion secret, it started in 1.25 and now it is stable. Some of the use cases can be like, you know, it can be used to validate the size of the block storage before initiating the expansion. Uh, sometimes the PV is backed by encrypted block storage like the Lucas and uh, it needs a passphrase. So this serves that particular purpose as well. In order to use it, you have a storage class. In the storage class, you need to provide field called parameters. And in that, you can specify CSI storage gates, node expand secret name and node expand secret namespace. So this secret name can be any secret name and can be a standard Kubernetes secret object. And that will be there with the storage class that you create and it will serve all these use cases that have come over the period since 1.25 and before that when it was not there. So over the period of time, whenever the validation secret or passphrase is required for the expansion, this particular feature will serve the purpose. Another feature that I want to highlight is the taint based pod eviction. Now there is a new controller uh, called the taint eviction controller and earlier it was part of the node lifecycle controller. So with the new taint eviction controller, it becomes easy to manage the pod eviction. And it also adds new metrics like pod deletion total, which are the total number of pods that get deleted and the pod uh, deletion duration seconds as well. Uh, in order to use it, you need to enable the separate taint eviction controller. Another feature moving to GA is the read write once pod. So if you know in Kubernetes, uh, when you talk about the persistent volume and the PVCs, there are three access modes, which are read, write once, read, write many, and read only many. So when we talk about the read, write once, it means like it's there for only one node, but uh, multiple pods 
on that particular node can you know read and write that can lead to inconsistencies and it can be difficult when you want some of the safety guarantees over there uh, so for that in 1.22 this feature was in introduced uh, i think i did talk in one of my earlier release videos of read write one spot that is very interesting and good feature uh, and now it is moving to ga which is good it it makes sure that only one pod across the whole cluster so only one pod across the whole cluster can read that particular pvc or write to it so the auto generation of the service account tokens were removed in 1.24 and they were generated in a time bound manner and this has been evolving over the releases now in 1.29 the legacy service account token cleanup adds invalid to the auto legacy auto generated service account token which have not been used uh, by default over a year and then it automatically removes them if it's not being actually used for over a year so you get a year invalid and then if it's invalid and not being used for over year, one year then it gets automatically removed let's move to another feature called pod ready to start so pod ready to start containers is a condition that is set by the kubelet if the sandboxing and the networking for a particular pod is verified and okay so what happens is when a user creates a pod a pod goes to the node and kubelet is responsible for talking with the container runtime interface the container runtime which is there like the cryo container d etc and then it creates an isolated sandbox using all the linux namespaces which are there and also set the networking for it now this particular thing is important because it helps in better troubleshooting if something goes wrong it gives better visibility of the whole process when the sandboxing is happening it also tells you the delays happening in the sandboxing and to the start of it uh, so i think it gives a good amount of benefits to the cluster administrators if the condition is set uh, and it gives a good view of the phases of the pods which are uh, starting so this particular feature moves to beta in 1.29 and uh, next up is the sidecar containers moving to beta we have seen like i have created a detailed video on the sidecar containers what are they what do we mean actually by the sidecar containers and how we used to create this and how it becomes the first class citizen when we add the sidecar container and make the restart policy as always and with this particular kubernetes 1.29 version uh, the termination of the sidecar containers actually happens in the reverse order where the sig term uh, signal is sent in the uh, reverse order so this feature continues to evolve which is great to see moving on to the next alpha feature that we have is the api to manage the ip addresses the cidr range of the services so as you might know that whenever there is a kubernetes release a new kubernetes release i tend to create a new environment very soon and that's what i did so this is my playground on killer coda that you can access i have put the link in the description and it will spin up a single node kubernetes 1.29 cluster now uh, going back what we'll be seeing is slash etc kubernetes manifest cube abi server dot yaml now why i did this is because since this is an alpha feature and for the alpha feature the feature gates have to be enabled and for this we have enabled the feature gate called multi cidr service allocator as true so this is the feature gate that has to be enabled and the runtime configuration networking.gates.iob1 alpha1 now whenever you create a pod in kubernetes or a deployment in kubernetes the pod ip addresses are ephemeral what what do i mean by that is whenever you delete a pod it gets a new ip but in order for other services to consume or the end users to consume your application which are your pods uh, we create services so that is why services are important and the ip addresses of the services come from this point the there is a range called service cluster ip range so it is 10960.0.28 in this particular case so once this feature is enabled what we can do is we can see kubectl get service cidr and we'll be able to see that kubernetes cidr is 10960.0.28 now before this particular feature 
you have to edit the YAML API server YAML file. You can edit that, increase that range uh, on the exhaustion and you will be able to uh, do it. But it requires a Cube API server restart. If you want it to proceed without a restart, you can do it with this alpha feature. We'll try to create a services. So this, this means there are 14 IP addresses which are available. So kubectl get svc. You can see there are two services and there are 14 IPs that can be allocated for the services. Now we'll try to create more by using this command. This command simply creates a cluster IP service type uh, from 1 to 13 and it will see what happens. So let's create this. It has started creating, but you can see in the end it is uh, giving the error that failed to create cluster IP service. Internal error occurred. Failed to allocate a service IP range is full. Now what we'll do is we'll create a new service CIDR, which is a alpha feature. So you can see v1 alpha one kind service CIDR, give it a name and the new CIDR value. So let's create that kubectl apply hyphen f CIDR and it has created kubectl get service CIDR and we can see we have a new service CIDR. Now what we'll do is we'll try to create 10 more services um, and this time let's create from 14 to 30 and we should not see that error again. And we can see these services are creating without doing any restart for the API server, we have increased the service CID array. So this is also a new alpha feature which uh, has come in Kubernetes 1.29. Another feature which is there is the pod lifecycle sleep action. So this is also an alpha feature. And if we try to see ETC Kubernetes manifest cube API server, we will be able to see that there is a pod lifecycle sleep action feature gate that needs to be enabled in this particular thing. Now this is for the webhook. For example, I have this deployment file and you can see that in the pre-stop. So in the pod lifecycle, you can define a pre-stop. Pre-stop is a webhook that is used for graceful shutdown. And currently before prior to this, there were two exec and HTTP and the sleep is the uh, third one. Now you could have done the exec and done the bash sleep, but you need to have that particular binary. This is much more neater way of doing the sleep for the effective troubleshooting, graceful shutdown, and even improving the overall reliability and the availability of Kubernetes application. Uh, now in this particular scenario, uh, you can see there is a sleep of 29 seconds. It should be less than the, the graceful termination period, obviously. It actually helps you to achieve the zero downtime upgrades that is there. So this is also one particular alpha feature that you can enable. Another alpha feature is the authorization configuration. So in order to perform more complex and structured authorization, the new alpha feature authorization configuration has been introduced. And now with Cube API server, you are able to provide authorization config file and you need to, but you need to make sure it is there on all the nodes where the API server is there. And you, if this is enabled, then you cannot use the authorization mode in conjunction. Like if you try to use the both, uh, it will lead to error and the Cube API server will exit. In order to use the authorization config, you need to enable the feature gate since this is an alpha feature. And uh, what the config look like for this is, let's do a cat. So this is how the config looks like. Uh, you have the kind API version, you can see that v1 alpha 1 authorization configuration authorizes its webhook and you can define the webhook and you can define the authorized time TTL, unauthorized TTL time for the webhook uh, request and then you can match the conditions. So as you can see, you can use the regular CEL common expression language and you can see for example, uh, only intercept request into the cube system namespace expression request dot resource attributes or system uh, don't intercept request from cube system namespace in accounts and you can see the expression for that as well like not and in the system service accounts cube system yeah it it gives more structured approach towards the authorization and uh, um, i think this will soon be in beta and ga in the coming releases and that time you won't be needing to enable that feature flag that i just show you which is the authorization configuration so with this feature you can have enhanced validation rules uh, based on CEL, you can have multiple OIDC providers, you can have different clients, so it gives uh, more structured authorization. Another feature in alpha in Kubernetes 1.29 is the match label keys. Now this is under the scheduling section, you can see assigning pod to the nodes with respect to pod affinity and affinity. 
So match label keys is an alpha feature and you have to enable the match label keys in pod affinity feature gate to do that. So let's take an example to understand it in a better way. So let's consider that there is a deployment and uh, you have the pod template hash which uh, sets on the pod managed as part of the deployment uh, where the value is unique for the each revision. So in, in the spec section of the deployment, you can define uh, in the template the pod affinity and in the pod affinity, you will be able to define the match label keys and in this the match label keys are set to pod template hash. So using the pod template hash in the match label keys allows you to target the pods that belong to same revision as the incoming port so that the rolling upgrade so when you do the upgrade won't break the affinity there is another one uh, similar to that like you don't have to change the feature gate feature gate remains the same uh, but it is the mismatch label keys so let's say you have a different tenants and you don't want each other tenants uh, pods running on the same topology domain uh, in that particular scenario you can use it so for example assume that all relevant pods have a tenant label set so all the pods are having this particular label set. So you have a label called tenant and it's tenant A and other pods might be having different tenants. So what you can do is you can have the uh, pod affinity and in that you can match labels with key. So ensure that the pod associated with the tenant land on the correct node pool. So for that we can use this. So I think it even enhances the uh, functionality of pod affinity by having this particular feature. Uh, another one of the feature is the NF table backend for Cube Proxy. So Cube Proxy has been having the backend of IP tables, uh, but all the latest performance and the enhancements is being done for the NF table. So this particular feature adds a new backend for the Cube Proxy based on NF tables. Now there are a few Windows features as well, like the adding support for container D kubelet uh, for image per pull. You will be able to pull different images based on the runtime class. This has to be implemented by the container runtimes. Then the in-place update pod resources has also uh, come to Windows. And then the kubelet resource uh, metrics endpoints have been moved to GA. So you have better uh, metrics from that. And we have already talked about a bunch of deprecations for the N3 cloud providers and stuff. Uh, so all in all, the Kubernetes release has come with massive set of features. We have discussed a few of them. Uh, I don't remember them in order uh, how we have discussed. There is a very nice block that I'll be putting in uh, the link from official Kubernetes 1.29 release blog that covers some of these features. Um, and I'll also put link to the environment, the Q129, which I was using uh, so that you can play around with a single node Kubernetes 1.29 Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so try it out, try out all the alpha features and see what were the alpha features and try it out in the beta, which becomes enable and also the uh, GA ones. I think Kubernetes is moving towards more stabilized, uh, secure, platform it's already the de facto standard for running the containers we have seen that in 2023 like it's being used massively managed kubernetes is being used massively uh, so i think the running kubernetes itself is becoming like uh, running linux so you are running linux and you are just running kubernetes there's no like second thoughts to it uh, yeah there might be certain scenarios where you don't need kubernetes that's a separate topic altogether but yeah if you need a deep container orchestration then there is no doubt in choosing kubernetes and a huge thanks to all the release team, like everyone, each and everyone involved in the release team uh, for making this Mandela release happen. I think it's amazing logo, amazing set of features. Uh, I'm really excited about the alpha features. We tried a few of them. Now it's you. Now you try it out, read through the documentations, read through the caps, uh, which is the Kubernetes enhancement proposals that detail all the features. So any feature which is out there, it has a cap associated with it. Now each cap will have everything in detail about that particular feature, the motivation, the summary, the implementation, what is being done, the examples, everything. And make sure to check out all the blogs, the documentation within the Kubernetes uh, so that you have the better understanding of each of the features that you want to dive into. And with this, uh, that was all about Kubernetes 1.29 from me. Please let me know your favorite feature from Kubernetes 1.29 in comment section. And if you like the video, please do share so that everyone kind of can try out Kubernetes 1.29. Uh, also, the playground is available for free on Killer Coda, so try it out. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.